finished watching the film and um, thought it was super interesting and mm. obviously very relevant today for many reasons. Yes. Um, so let's jump in there. Um, talk a little bit about the, the crime that's kind of at the center of uh, Hold Your Fire and why it's so significant. Yeah, well, you know, these young guys at the time, um, they were Sunni Muslims, which is a more traditional form of Muslim. And they had gotten into some beef with the black Muslims, the Elijah Muhammad, Minister Farrakhan, you know, sect of the Muslims in there. And so basically they felt like they were threatened. They wanted a dumb move. They robbed the sporting goods store to get, to get these guns. A cop shows up, shoot out hostages in the store, people buying, they become hostages. And it becomes a 47 hour hostage situation, a major news story, a major event with hundreds of people gathering and clamoring. And um, the beginning of hostage negotiation comes out of this, which has saved thousands of lives around the world. A, a New York cop, a traffic cop named Harvey Schlossberg had recently gotten his PhD in psychology. And um, some of the brass of the NYPD had the, the great idea to call him in to get some advice as opposed to running in, throwing in some tear gas and shooting up the place. And that begins hostage negotiation, which is worldwide, which we feel and would like to see more police officers utilize these tactics as opposed to rolling up guns out and shooting to kill, which we've seen happen way too many times, if not a knee on somebody's neck. Um, hold your fire with this dramatic, unfortunate incident gave birth once again to hostage negotiation, which is not as utilized in the police forces as we feel it should be. Yeah, talk a little bit about uh, the tactics that Harvey employed in this situation that were really unusual for the time. Yeah, they were they were unique and very unusual, but he kind of understood having a conversation, talking, which is the key to de-escalation, engaging this person, you know, talking with them like they were human and just getting that that adrenaline which is raging on both sides. If you can dial that down you can get to the co-op like, wait a minute, you don't want to die. You're not trying to do police uh, suicide by cop. You really stumbled into a situation that was unfortunate. So Harvey just had a command of, he, he did his homework in college working on his PhD. And this, I'm not a psychologist, but you know, there are things you could understand and listen to and realize if this guy wants to live, how can we talk him down and figure out a way? So you see there were tactics and getting a radio in, engaging, whereas on the other side, uh, bringing that tank, which was probably one of the first times uh, police equipment like this was utilized, if not also featured, this tank comes down the street um, with the uh, one of the uh, guys that did the, uh, the that did the robbery, his mother was on a speaker, and you know yelling, and they were you know it was just not the way you want to deescalate. And once again, too many police forces across the country have gotten these militaristic arms. It's like, come on, what what's going on? So anyway, to use more psychology, more thought, is what Harvey did masterfully people listened and people are still alive as a result of what he did. Yeah, and I thought what the film did so well was it sort of presented all the different points of view mm. from the hostages to the hostage takers to the police officers. And you right. sort of empathized a little bit with everyone. And Correct. you sort of saw, you know, it wasn't one-sided where you saw from the police perspective or from the hostage takers perspective or from the, the hostages perspective, you kind of saw, wow, everyone's in this situation. Correct. And, uh, and that's what I thought was really interesting about it is you, you kind of understood how this, this crazy event sort of unfolded. Yeah. And Stefan, interestingly, um, being, being white, I'm sure got a much different kind of uh, interview from, the, from, from those former cops than if somebody like me was uh, sitting there with them. And that was also an important part of the film 
to bring, to get that honesty, to, to Steph understood, like, look, I'm going to get these guys to talk to me. They didn't understand Steph's politics, nor did they care, but they were able to feel a, a comfort in a way that I think brought out a lot of honesty. And uh, that's one of the powerful points in the film is the, is the brutal honesty from those cops, whether we agree or not, clearly we got, a, we got into their heads and got to see some of the mentality that still exists in police forces in New York and in many other places. So, yeah, I mean, and what do you, what, one of the interesting things I thought there was a nice sort of message about rehabilitation too. Yeah. Some of these guys and, you know, yeah. there's life after an event like this. Yeah. Shue, uh, the who was the, you know, leader of that, you know, the four guys that did the heist, he spent 37 years in prison and he did everything one can do in prison to reform, to, re, to rehabilitate programs, degrees. Um, he literally got out of prison before the other gentleman who was just like, you know, one of the, you know, the kind of quiet guy of the, the heist. You know, kind of, they, they were all a bunch of nerds, essentially, that just made this wrong move. But uh, Shue is works today in uh, conflict resolution and helping people that come home from the prison system adjust to you know life in this in the in the in the real world again after being in prison like him. And um, so he does this work to use his ex his self as an example of somebody that did wrong but has rehabilitated, improved their lives and improved the lives of hundreds of others that work with him in the programs in Brooklyn that he's involved in. So it's special. And when you hear him speak about holding your fire, not just in situations with the police, but in our homes, in the hood, um, just clearly there's a gun problem in America. Um, we just saw something horrendous happen in Buffalo New York, but clearly the message of holding your fire, we feel looms large and should be instituted in many situations in many ways. So hopefully we can convince some people to give it some thought, and maybe implement some new tactics. In yeah, I, I was gonna ask you that in terms of um, concrete takeaways from the film, are there specific policies that you think uh, local police forces or federally or statewide that can be enacted that would, uh, you know, benefit uh, both on both sides of the police and, and uh, citizens? Sure. Once again, you know, um, police officers, for one, there needs to be some serious thought and police officers are not trained to be psychologists. So when they show up at a situation like just recently, few days ago, there's a clip that went viral of, the, I think, I'm not sure what state. And if the woman, I think might've been Latin, she might've been white, but she was having a mental issue, uh, dementia. The parents, the relatives had called, the woman had a knife. She was being erratic and the police show up. What you see in this clip is from the police body cam gun pointed at this woman screaming at her, put that knife down, put that knife down. He then opens fire and shoots this woman in her chest, um, not even shooting to maim, to lay a leg, an arm or something, which would have clearly, you know, it, this woman's dead. And it's just a tragic situation that um, we have to rethink how our police officers are trained. And can we get units? If you get a call that there's a mental situation or a person has an issue, can there, can there be somebody that come up that has some of that sensitivity and that training to kind of try to talk a situation down or de-escalate as opposed to shooting to kill? Um, and so that's what we're hoping. We can get some people to kind of have some adjustments. We have this great innovation of hostage negotiation in place around the world that started right here in New York um, that can be instituted or figure out a way to fold in some of this thinking and some of this methodology into our police forces 
which keep wanting to get more and more money for more and more guns and more and more of this. But what about more and more training and getting our officers or a, um, a psychological, a psych, <sighs> you know what I'm trying to say? People that are versed in psychology to, to come in to help de escalate, defuse, talk down, you know, put some calm in the air and, and basically save lives. Yeah. Now, what do you think? Um, I mean, we, we spoke, it touched a little bit on um, Buffalo, but I just want, I know you, you have done a lot in terms of social activism, and I just wanted to get your reaction to that situation. Yeah, it's horrible, man. And people, you know, we, we live in such a polarized society right now. Um, news on one side, some channels, news on the other, social media, bringing people down a rabbit hole, bombarding them with misinformation that kind of has warped people. And people have like, you know, read all these things and they believe them and then they want to go and act out and do really foolish things which is super, super sad, you know, that kid's gonna spend the rest of his life most most likely in prison. And um, man, and lives were lost, you know, family members, loved ones. So it's tragic. And uh, I just hope we can, you know, it's, 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 it's a major problem. I don't have the answer to all these things, but I think with our law enforcement, we could have some influence in terms of, um, things that we can do to get them more on point. I mean, you know, guns is a big issue, obviously, and the proliferation, I'm not down with that. It's problematic. And these are the problems in America, but I think there's a culture of violence that has been in place. It's, it's what this country is built on. And we need to be aware of that and just work to kind of improve what we know is, what we know doesn't work. Like let's, let's all knuckle down and try to make it better.